Hey YouTube, coming at you with another team. Uh, so I just kind of went over Amphro's last matchup uh, yesterday, and today I'm going over Venusaur and Pidgeot. So yes, this team is double weak to Ice, um, so you can switch up one if you want, but I'm just going to talk about how strong each of them are. Pidgeot, if you go to the Sims on PvP Poke, it's got like, it almost does not lose. A lot of that is kind of, uh, Pidgeot's kind of a Sims hero because you can like Feather Dance, Bait, lower their attack times too, and then Brave Bird sort of thing. But in practice, it's also, like, I think it's over-simmed on PvP Poke, but it's still very, very, very strong. Um, a lot of time, you can make the decision. You're going to see a lot of these matchups. I basically go um, to almost two Brave Birds and then make the decision what I want to do, whether I want to bait or just do, like, back-to-back -back Brave Birds or Brave Bird and Bail. Plenty of options with Pidgeot. So it's really, really strong. It's strong in the open. It's strong in this limited meta as well. And then Venusaur. Um, uptick in Waters uh for alligator polyrath uptick in fighters annihilate uh stuff like that and then so it's just like generally strong with how it can resist a lot of stuff here um and then frenzy plants like one of the best obviously one of the best moves in the game so let's take a look at some battles mirror match here uh let's see what i decide to do i'm gonna go straight brave bird here again I feel in a lot of these matchups, it is probably beneficial to go Brave Bird and then chip a ton or take out. Because I did Brave Bird and lowered my defense, I'm going to have to shield back. They Brave Bird as well, so that's helpful. Out comes a Lantern, and out comes, right, Uptick and Water. Lanterns I've seen a ton of as well. The amount of people have... I guess I should not be surprised the amount of people that have XL Lantern. Like, I theoretically have enough XLs for Lantern as, as well. I just don't have a Hundo yet. So you need a Hundo and you need... 296 XLs. So I have the 296 easy. I just don't have the XLs. So I don't have the uh, Hundo. Uh, but I one shot it there with the Venusaur. This Frenzy is going to take out what's left of the Pidgeot, even though it's resisted. Out comes your Fighter, right? And they can't, right? right? And I have a Fighter and Flyer. So it's just like Venusaur. I, I mentioned that in my video. I've only done two of these. So I think it was maybe Saturday's video. It's, it's not surprising that Venusaur is strong in this meta, right? You, you take out Giratina, which is very tough. You take out Registeel, which is kind of an evenish but bad matchup. You take out Guzzlord, which is bad because it's a dragon. And you add in a bunch of um, fighters and waters. Uh, of course, Venusaur is going to be very strong. I misplay timing on this one, not surprising. Of course, CMP is going to be won by Escav. I do get to lower the attack there, which is nice. We both go down, um, but, you know, okay. Double comes in. Again, Amphros is safe. Um, it's, a, it's, I think, one of the better safe swaps in this meta, quite honestly. Just having that, like, Thunder Punch brutal swing. And there's not... It's interesting. I th it's not. I, I shouldn't say I haven't seen a lot of dragons because I have seen a few Gudras, but I haven't seen a ton of dragons, right? In terms of stuff that's going to resist you, you really just got to watch out for like grounds, dragons, I guess grass too. Um, but there's not a lot of any right now, in my opinion. There's a lot of water, melodic, right? Here we go again. But there's not a ton of dragons. There is. I, I showcased Dragonite, which I said was like kind of like an okay. Um, and then, like I said, Guzzlord is banned. Um, I saw a couple Gudras. Venusaur with another one shot here. So, from that perspective, your electric is stronger. Again, I'm showcasing Venusaur. Here's a Dragonite. So, it's a dragon, but it's a half flying dragon. So, this is pretty good. You're going to get outpaced by the Dragon Breath. Like, they can two shield and take it with the, just the Dragon Breath damage, which I'm pretty sure is what happens here. I shield through another move, and I think I go down to the Dragon Breath damage here. Eh, they may have to throw a move, and then I'll maybe decide here. Or they let it go, which is good, because I just flipped switch, and I win CMP. So four attack there coming in, and the CMP here. I've started to now, so, I've started to now not care as much about the zero attack. I used to not swear by it, but I used to really focus on the like rank one zero attack 
all bulk heavy. A lot of the times I'm finding like giving up a little bit of that zero attack bulk for like a two or three, four attack seems to be better, especially if you like have a bunch of like CMP matchups. Um, just having the higher attack just gives you the benefit of that overall. Plus it actually raises your overall stat product, right? Because stat product is a combination of your attack stats, your like IVs and other stuff too. So um, yeah, grabbed another shield and now this is an easy one shield plus Venusaur sweep here. For alligator, should be decent overall, right? Because you are double resisting the claws because of the half normal typing. I expected to lose CMP, so I'm not going to throw it right away. Because again, like I said, I, in a lot of these matchups, I'm just going to get up to Brave Bird and throw on Brave Bird clubs up to here. Um, so this will do a ton of chip damage or grab a shield, ton of chip damage. Once I take it low enough, once I take it low enough that I can actually just take switch and have some energy here, I feel like it's worth it. I should have just thrown Brave Bird here. I mean, a total mistake here. There's no reason for me to throw Feather Dance when I have an Ampharos in the back, right? Like, take it out. There's there's no reason to keep this alive. And then they reset, and then Dragonite just with two shield advantage is going to be a problem. Not like my Pidgeot had much health anyway, so I, I don't think it would have affected the overall um, matchup here. Just because two shield of Dragonite against Ampharos and a Venusaur is going to be too tough to overcome. Uh... But still, yeah, throw that throw the Brave Bird. There's no point of there's no point of baiting there. Um so yeah, I'm I'm gonna go down. I'm just I'm too low of health. This is I, I mentioned if go watch my if you haven't watched that video yet, go watch that Saturday video. Basically that's what I said. Like Dragonite is a bit glassy, but it's very attack heavy, and you focus on getting that dragon breath damage, and that's how you play. So again, I'm not I'm <sighs> This is, a, I find this is the best way to play Pidgeot. Just don't throw right away and just go to like two Brave Birds, make your decision. If you land one, you can now make a decision to like keep switch and have energy coming out, right? So I have energy coming out and I'll keep switch. I'm down a shield, but that's okay. Greedent, again, no real point to bait here, especially against a Greedent. I doubt it that it's shields. Okay. Even you know what, even with that shield, I don't think that's the right move. I still think you just throw the Brave Bird there. Um, but it is very helpful because Greedent. I can come either or. I think the reason I come Ampharos. Uh, was it a Reed? What did they have on the lead? I think I read that Venusaur may be strong in the back. I'm kind of forgetting what was on the lead. It has been a crazy <laughs> 72 hours here. Uh, it's been bad. So, okay. So basically, that's how you play the team. Pidgeot lead, I always go, unless it's like a super hard, like an ice or something, then you instant ice electric, instant swap to Ampharos. If not, I usually go up to two, like almost two Brave Birds, and then throw the Brave Bird, and then make the decision what I want to do from there. And then Venusaur and Pidgeot kind of handle each other's weaknesses. Like overall, to a certain extent, um, more more like Venusaur handles Pidgeot's electric as opposed to Pidgeot handling Venusaur's like fire weakness sort of thing. Um, okay, I made it eight nine minutes into a video. Let's talk about this weekend. So drove down to Hamilton. We're driving back tomorrow, as as in today when you're watching this. Um. So for starters, my kids get car sick. So they, they, they get car sick and they've both been fighting colds for like the last couple of weeks. <laughs> so on the way down, 10 minutes in, my son's throwing up. So he throws up. Okay, wife sits in the back to try and catch the puke with some, we travel with like little buckets. <laughs> so eventually make it there. Getting them to sleep in the car was not great either. So it was just a terrible car ride. Way more traffic. I thought, I knew there was like 15, it was like a, it's like a five hour drive. There was like 15, 16 cops with people pulled over, over the five hours, like just they're on a blitz or something. Plus it was like a lot of traffic, um, a lot of people traffic. So drive brutal. 
Um, Saturday night, I'm up at like 2 a.m. My son's sleeping in the room with us, and at 4 a.m. I hear him puking. So he's puking at 4 a.m. So he didn't he didn't go back to sleep. Cleaned up that. Otherwise, the day was okay. Lots of people in and out to see us. Easter morning, this morning, my daughter calls me. My tummy hurts. She pukes up. <laughs> so she's been like low energy all day. And then we just like, I'm filming this at like nine. And my kid's been like not going to sleep. And we have to drive back six hours tomorrow with what is essentially two puking kids who are sick. So it's been freaking rough. It is not a good Easter weekend here. Um, and then I got to roll back. By, I'm going to drive home six, seven hours tomorrow, which is going to be crap. Like, because half, I get, I get the Monday off, but a lot of people don't. So it'll be just busy roads with two sick kids in a car who get car sick. And then I will get home and unwind and have dinner in bed. And then I got to roll into work tomorrow where I'm now acting at a level above my, well, they're, they're paying me for it, but I'm acting above my level, short staffed, um, with a government budget coming in a couple weeks. So it's going to be ramped up on work. Anyways, how are you guys doing? That's been my, <laughs> that's been my little bit. Uh, I cannot wait to have, get past this, like getting sick phase constantly. Or at least to the phase where they're old enough that they can like deal with their own sickness. That's the thing. It's a five and a two and a half year old. So they're absolutely like useless, right? They rely on you for everything. Um, so sicknesses do suck, but man, at least when they're a bit older, they can kind of deal with their own stuff. But for the short term, it's all on you. It's so funny because I can see like, yeah, we're, we're totally off topic here, but that's fine. Um, I can see in the comments those who have kids and those who clearly don't. Because <laughs> the ones who have kids are just like, been there, done that. Like, it's just a... I, I have never taken a sick day for work since I started working for the government. I worked for the government for... Coming up on 11 years now. And I had never, ever taken a sick day because I don't get sick. And I used to always say that. I'm like, I don't get sick. I don't need to worry. I don't get sick. And they're like, you shouldn't say that. You, you're going to jinx yourself. I'm like, I don't get sick. And then I had two kids and those little friggin' germ, germ, just like grabbers come home with it constantly and get sick themselves. And then you get sick. It's one thing to like take care of yourself, but when you're taking care of like two young kids, like even when you're sick, you you like you can't be sick because you don't have the time to be sick. You have to like take care of them. So there, it's really like no, like there's no time for you to like get better. Anyways, that is my maybe too much detail <laughs> rant about what happened this weekend. Meanwhile, Venusaur is going to take out what was left of the Gudra and now double frenzy a for alligator to take this out for the win and that's the last battle perfect anyways i hope your easter if you celebrate went a little better than mine um i will be back to my regularly scheduled house tomorrow like i said we're driving down tomorrow so you'll get the regular kids background stuff tomorrow morning tomorrow night well tomorrow morning when the video comes out anyways that is it thanks for watching see you guys in the next one